tonight, I just kind of wanted to do a more impromptu and casual show based on things that are going on in the news and a lot of questions that are popping up and talk a little bit about, you know, what is it meaning as we see vaccinations going up? We see mixed news. And when are we going to start returning to normal? And what does that actually mean? So we wanted to kick this off today and talk a little bit about those. If there's areas that are not political or conspiracy related that you'd like to talk about, feel free to join us in the comments and let us know. So, Michael, how are you doing this evening? Really well. And listen, if you want to go conspiracy alley, just do it in the comments. <laughs> yes, uh, we're, do we're having fun broadcast. tonight. We're not going crazy. No, it's it's going to be casual. And as soon as you saw me, I knew it was going to be fun. So there you go. Yep. We, we brought the fun element. But uh, for a lot of people, this has not been a fun time at all. Uh, many people are still suffering. Um, I don't know if you have what we've had for a while. We've got Randy here. Hello, Randy. Hey, Randy. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, we are right now having a lot of people who are affected by long haul. Do you know what I mean? The yes. long haulers Have you, could you explain that? And then I'll tell you what my, what I believe it, it means. And we'll just kind of shoot back and forth. Yeah. Well, kind of geeking out for just a second, short term, we know what happens if we're in a really stressful fight or flight reaction, our bodies react. And then over a short period of time, we recover. Over a long period, we go through a whole different response, and that long-term stress, long-term trauma triggers our bodies to stay at this elevated rate at being prepared for bad things to happen, and in essence, we kind of burn out. So imagine driving your car. We're going to go back to the old stick shift days, so I, I think we're dating ourselves. Imagine only driving in first and second gear, and you start to burn out your transmission. And that's yeah. really what's happening. A lot of people have been dealing with stress, dealing with inconvenience, dealing with the emotions of feeling trapped because we're limited to where we can go. And we're starting to see some of the longer term physical and mental reactions to that. And a lot of people are hurting, which is really sad. So from what I've heard, there's nurses that have reported where they believe they've got it over and over again, but uh, the symptoms don't last as long and they're not as strong, but they're finding that they have now constant dizziness, shortness of breath, they have problems concentrating, uh, almost like having mono symptoms. And is this something that's gonna continue as we get you know, more and more variants like, is this going to just keep chipping away at certain individuals and then there'll be other though the other people, again, that aren't affected? Yes. Uh, uh, so we're not offering medical advice or scientific advice, but what I'm trying to do is I've been following this as closely as I can. I've been following the news, reading articles. So I'm trying to do my best job of synthesizing a lot of that information and translating it into something that matters and is more practical for our audience. So the type of virus that COVID is, is a coronavirus. SARS, MERS, these viruses have been around for a while. And in the past, we've done a good job of containing them. This one got out, got a little crazy, and we lost control. We weren't able to really do anything with it. So as the virus mutates, just like the influenza or similar to influenza that we see every fall, those variants, our bodies have different responses, different rates at being able to how quickly we can attack and get over it. So with the vaccines that were developed, they are at the very least helping most people not get very sick and definitely keeping people out of the hospital and reducing the people who might die from this. As the virus mutates, our bodies kind of recognize it. You know, like when you go to a party and you know you've met that person before, but you can't quite remember their name, but then it comes to you later in the evening. That's kind of how our bodies react to these new strains. We get, we'll catch them. Our bodies start to fight it, 
but we might feel sick. We it might we might never know. We might be sick for a couple days, or in a worse situation, we might get a, more sick. So the vaccine and if we've got over it, we'll give our bodies more defense against it, but there's no 100% miracle shot or anything else that will prevent us from ever getting sick from these viruses again. One of the most common questions that I get asked all the time is which vaccine you think, Michael, is the best? And I'm going to ask you the same question, and I'm going to see if we have the same answer. <laughs> from the uh, from the medical professionals I've spoken to about this, uh, including one who is on weekly and daily meetings talking about this with scientists and doctors throughout the world, the best vi vaccine is the one you can get the fastest. All of them will, if you get sick, help prevent a serious illness or one that could hospitalize you. They are going to have different reaction rates to the variants. Like the UK variant right now is about half of all new cases in the US. The South African var variant is kind of scary because people are getting sicker and it's spreading well. But even, you know, the Johnson & Johnson in testing had a slightly lower efficiency. The um, others are doing better and all of them seem to give you some protection against the variants, but it could be months or longer before we know if they're not effective. So for me, the very first appointment I could get, that's the one that I happen to go with. Um, for me, what it happened to be the Moderna. Yeah, and that's the one I've heard is the best. I've also heard uh, there has been in Canada where they've had mix-ups where they did more dinner, you know, the first shot and the second shot, they did uh, a different one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And as we go along, if you, if you have comments, if you have things that, that we can address, we definitely will. And Mookie asks, well, what about the people who haven't shown symptoms? So those people are asymptomatic. And think about summer allergies. Most people have some degree of allergies, but mm -hmm. not everyone, their eyes water, they get sniffly, they get congested, whereas some people might. Or somebody who normally doesn't have allergies, if you walk into a wind that is filled with pollen, you probably will get congested just because there's so much of it coming into your body. And that's been one of the really hard parts about the COVID-19 strains and early variants is we don't, without widespread testing like they did in Taiwan and South Korea and some other places, we really don't know how many people were exposed and never realized it. That's also why a lot of children and teenagers early on were exposed and may have been sick, but they didn't display symptoms. Their bodies reacted to it, but not in a way that we would typically relate to being sick. And in some of those people, we may see some long-term damage, lung damage, heart damage, brain damage, yeah. because our bodies in a defense sometimes attack our own cells to stop the virus from spreading. Mm -hmm. And that's where some of the heart, lung, and even brain damage is coming from. Okay. First off, you're doing rapid talk, which is great in your your brain is firing and wiring at a, rap at a rapid pace. So here's the first thing that came to my mind is COVID toes. So that was round one where, you know, not many, but they had swelling. It almost looked like frostbite. The skin was purple. It was uh, sometimes broken, some, some, a little bit of oozing in some, isn't this lovely? <laughs> do we have do we have pictures? No, we, he told me not to do pictures. So we don't want to gross you out. But a lot of people have kind of just put that on the back burner. But now that we have supposedly stronger variants, right? What is it going to be? Is it going to be far uh, worse consequences? And originally, the doctor said this. This is a two piecer. No, don't worry. It's going to be like Kool-Aid. It's going to dilute 
and there will be less likelihood of people dying. Well, we got that one wrong, unfortunately. Well, originally, the whole thing was flatten the curve, is if too many people get infected too quickly or too severely, it will overwhelm our hospitals. And we saw that in some areas, which meant even people who weren't infected but needed critical care, chemo, a heart attack, a traffic accident, couldn't get into hospitals or emergency rooms. So from what I've seen over 2020, we lost twice as many people as we normally would have, mm -hmm. not all due to COVID. These are not all yeah. COVID deaths, but people who needed chemo may have stopped getting it and lost their battle to cancer. Yes, uh, but that's going on right now in Canada. Yes. Our numbers are higher now than they've ever been. We were freaking right out when it was at 300 a day. Right. The other day we were at 4,000. And, and this is where it would be wonderful to say, hey, everyone's going to get a runny nose for three days and you'll be fine. The problem is our bodies don't have natural defenses to coronaviruses like we do influenza. Mm -hmm. Maybe through evolution, our future generations will have the same natural defenses and, and we'll grow up with it. But for now, our bodies seem to be reacting in different ways. Some people are losing their sense of taste and smell. Mm -hmm. Other people are having strokes. Other people, like Mookie said a minute ago, yeah. don't have let, any symptoms. Let's unpack that one part yeah. there, though, because you're doing rapid fly again here. Okay, so I had to do the same thing with Ari. Um, and wish I, which, I wish he was here. Oh, my God, it'd be insane. It'd be fun. So for the average person to lose their sense of taste, to not be able to taste that lovely pop there that yes. would be that would be enough for them to really maybe not want to be on the planet anymore if they couldn't taste their food and then you put on top of that you have no energy so right. here's the thing though that's driving me crazy is we could chew on this for 3 hours everybody else would be asleep and we would be just starting to scrape the surface of this and what's on What's unfortunate is it's ever unfolding. Yes. And every day there's new distinctions being made by doctors and we're learning as we go. So for anyone to say they have the crystal ball in some ways is really being unfair to the masses. Correct. So when we started falsely saying things like, oh, it's like Kool-Aid, it'll dilute, you know, viruses don't want to kill their host. We have nothing to worry about once we get through this first wave. Then we had other doctors saying things. I'm going somewhere with this. We had other doctors saying things like, no, no, we need to fight it now while it's light because then we have a chance. And there was all this debating because nobody knew and we had to be responsible. And then the other part, which is incredibly um, complex, is... How many people have died because they were unable to have surgeries, right? Like, like you're saying, and that's happening right now. And how many people are so terrified they'll never go near a hospital now and they'll die in their living room because they can't take the risk. And that unfortunately is where my parents are. Yes. Yeah. So which part of the, that lovely mess I gave you, do you want to unpack? <laughs> It, it is complicated, but that doesn't mean we give up, meaning we're going we're going to if we're responsible, we're going to be washing our hands, sanitizing and wearing masks in public for a while. And if we were really smart about it and willing to put up with the inconvenience, possibly forever. Yes, because here's here's the mystery of Earth. Okay, let's say that COVID disappears. All coronaviruses disappear. There will be in humanity's future, if we're still around, another pandemic with another disease at another time, because that's how life works. Okay. We've escaped the so, Ebola. Okay, so, slow down again. So what we're doing right now from your what you're thinking is this is a warm-up. 
this is a warm up to something maybe far greater than this. Is that what you're saying? We we will always have viruses and diseases that we'll have to battle against. Some will be easier to deal with, like some of the bad, like um, norovirus that cruise mm -hmm. ships and hospitals and schools have had to deal with. It's kind of a nasty bug, but luckily you get sick, but few people die. Whereas Ebola, if you don't get very good treatment immediately, your chances of survival are low. Yes. So it's in our best interest to change our behavior so that we have a better chance of survival as mm -hmm. all of these bugs get passed around. Corona and all of the rest, they are always going to be with us. We need to be more responsible. Okay, how can we be more responsible? Let's break that down, if that's okay. And if yep. there's stu stuff you don't want to talk about, I'll tell you. Know, you. you know me well enough. You you can go there, but I I I really believe that we need to make people aware of that we're in this for a long time. That this is not. There's no quick fix here. There's no miraculous miracle that will happen where we wake right. up one morning and everyone is going to be healthy. And they're never going to get a cold or a virus or, yeah. Right. And I love what you said with the mask. Yeah. Get, so be, at the very simplest thing, um, I, I think one of the funniest cartoons I saw at the beginning of the pandemic was, if I've learned anything, it's how much I like eating out and touching my face. Yes. And we didn't realize it, but now I watch movies and TV shows yeah. and I'm like, oh no, they touch their face without washing their hands. And so our hygiene is going to need to get better. We're going to be disinfecting public spaces and some of our home spaces a lot better. And truthfully, masks are, depending on the mask you have, at the very least, if you happen to be sick, it is very far less likely you might get someone else sick. Think about how many people got the flu this fall. Very few people got the flu during the winter because of the protections we were taking against COVID. And that stopped the flu pretty well too. So wearing a mask for other Good people. Good strategy. Good strategy. Yeah. Are, are right. the easiest things we can do and not going out if you're sick. Okay, so we're, we're going into deep stuff here, as we knew we would. So we should read some of these comments because we know these people. The only certainty is that the, the Earth will always survive. Yes. yes. Humanity, maybe not. But that, when, when you hear people say, we're going to destroy the Earth, we can't. Look at what the Earth has been through. It will be fine. It's up to us how long we get to stay on this house. Yes. Yes, but we're not treating the house very well. Hello, Chris and Martin. Good to right. see you. And, yeah, and, and that's all part of the same picture. If we want to be healthier, if we want to have better lives, maybe we could cut down on the pollution a little. Maybe we can cut down on our energy use so that fossil fuels will last longer while we mm -hmm. develop some alternatives. Be completely selfish. You love having power and binging TV shows and going out to eat. It's in our best interest to conserve a little bit of energy wherever we can, recycle mm -hmm. when we can, to, to so we can last a little bit longer. So we're going to get slightly off topic. It's not terribly off topic. But I did hear that we have about 40 to 45 more seasons of growing vegetables before the, the earth is depleted the soil and it's it's a huge concern you've not heard this uh, um i i haven't heard i've i've tracked some of the fossil fuel projections but they're it's kind of hard to, you know those are indefinite estimates yes with artificial fertilizers and other techniques like ocean farming and hydroponic yes we, we i have believe hope. we could actually be sustainable for a lot longer. Yeah. But if you're talking about conventional farming or organic right. farming, organic farming, as wonderful as it sounds, is horribly inefficient. And we can't feed the current world population uh, with organic farming measures. Mm -hmm. We would just starve. 
See, so you guys think I throw him a curveball, but he just redirects it at me, and then I end up with it in my forehead. It's a beautiful thing, but um, yeah, and that's what I like is that I I think you and I view the world differently in some ways, but yes. we both have a great love for humanity, and. For me, I, I want to go on the spiritual realm for a second, not too long, but I think this has been a great lesson of all the things that we took for granted, like family and connection, simple things like hugging and being able to be together and just talking, you know what, with your friends and coworkers and being in, you know, have a drink after work and a good meal. And those have all been kind of taken away from us. And what I've noticed in Canada, which is really wild, is that we're on a total lockdown right now. So we're supposed to be out only if it's essential. That's the only reason. I see all these people eating ice cream cones. I see people walking around, riding their bike, shooting, you know, the what, and not really too worried about anything. It's almost like they've adjusted. So... The, right. the the shock and the awe and the fear of it, I think, has faded for a lot of people. And now they're just trying to find ways to cope. What do you think of that? I, I think so. Um, COVID burnout, just like Zoom fatigue, they're real. And we saw, we've seen this in the past. Um, it used to be called cabin fever. When mm -hmm. you're locked inside with the same people all winter long and limited yes. where you can go, you burn out. Yes. And we're seeing people who aren't used to cabin fever yeah. and everybody locked down for far longer. Mm -hmm. And I think there are unfortunately a lot of people who, instead of trying to resume a more normal life yeah. are saying, I give up. I'm going to take my chances. I'm not going to take any precautions. Yes. And that's going to prolong the the suffering for other people i'd just like to put a pause for a second here if you can read randy hearn's comments i don't know if you recognize that name yes okay he would yes. be an excellent guest on your show in the future on many subjects uh he is honestly one of my favorite human beings on the planet so absolutely yes we had a chance to work together for a while uh have great respect and i've been popping up some of his comments uh on the scroller uh absolutely very smart gentleman wonderful uh, absolutely agree uh, you know what and, I, and hi what, randy <laughs> miss yeah. you a lot yeah he's witty but he's got edge which yes. i think some of our shows need a little bit of edge you know you, you need that little zing. I, I think that's why Ari was good when we, we could, you know, poke him a few times and get him, you know, spinning. The, then the numbers went right, right up. I hope he watches this. <laughs> Sorry, Ari. Sorry. Oh, he's blushing. Well, that's good. That's yes. good. Wait till you get on the show. That'll be awesome. Yeah. Are you camera ready right now, sir? Well, if you are, pop in and join yeah. us if you'd like to for a minute. I mean, we. We're, we, we won't have it. a long broadcast, but love to to say yeah, hi. yeah, yeah. And I, I think love, this is uh, where so this is where we need more balance. And I think you know I live in the states, and we get a very bad but earned reputation for excess. We don't even do moderation and moderation, and we're seeing the signs of that. We're seeing large parties, craziness. And I understand a lot of people are upset to be where they feel they are being told or mandated to behave a certain way. Yeah. Ultimately, I'm not going to get into whether or not that serves a greater interest. But mm -hmm. if people took that individual responsibility, then I don't think it would be an issue. You know, right. wearing a mask isn't fun but it's not that inconvenient and it does worlds of good. And I, you know, honestly, uh, over these last couple of weeks, I'll be at vaccine number two tomorrow morning and mm -hmm. relatively protected. I'm really considering how long I'll wear a, va a mask in public and it may be forever, but it will certainly be for quite a while. Okay, can I, I just want to address something just because our brains yep. are a little slightly different, which is good. I think it makes great content and it always has and I think it always will. But 
there are people out there that are so based in fear now that even if they knew or were told that everything was clear and everything was fine and we were back to normal, they will forever now wear a mask. They've lost faith. And it's not all bad. Imagine if during flu season on the subway, they said, look, wear masks. It's in your best interest. And I remember people used to do that two years ago and I used to think, oh, you guys are nuts, you're paranoid. No, they were ahead of the curve. I've spent a lot of time uh, visiting my wife's family in Hong Kong and we've done side trips. And because of the population density, a lot of people wear masks in public. For me, yes, I was one of the people that mocked them, but it was because the type of mask they were wearing mm-hmm. didn't protect them at all. Yes. It wasn't one that was good at filtering out the air so that they wouldn't get affa- infected. Right. And one thing that the pandemic changed my perspective on was it might not protect them, but if they're sick, it will likely protect everyone else around them. Yeah. And that stops the spread. So you, you have to decide, are you protecting others with a minor inconvenience and a light mask, or do you want to protect yourself? In which case you need to get a multi-layer or a better or an N90 or an N95 rated mask that fits Mm -hmm. you properly, in which case then you can protect yourself and others at the same time. I'm not laughing at you. I'm just thinking in my head the way people wear masks now. Do you know what I mean? On your chin? They got it below their nose right or or they have it under their chin and it just it, i love it because it hides my lines on my neck <laughs> and i feel like i i'm more youthful with it it also get, makes me feel like i'm playing a doctor in real life it's it's all wonderful things but uh no nobody's wearing a mask correctly the other thing that was disturbing the other day when i was in the grocery store there was this family the mom the dad it looked like the the mother-in-law was all wearing masks and not one kid had one on. Yeah. Well, and early on, for whatever reason, children didn't seem to be catching it or showing symptoms. What they discovered in some of those kids is they were asymptomatic and the virus was potentially damaging their heart and Mm -hmm. lungs. My really big fear here is whether it's in a couple years, five years, 10 years, when some of these kids are playing sports, we might be seeing a lot more cardiac arrest or respiratory failure because of scarring in the lungs and heart that wasn't detected. And I'm hoping we have better scanning for athletes by the time that comes around. Oh my God, that's funny. Mask have saved me a fortune of Botox. <laughs> <laughs> and that, and those are the comments we want, the real ones. The yes. um, here, Here's something I want you guys to think about. And uh, imagine, you know, Hans and I, we're ahead of the curve. We're from the future. And we decided to go into the bank with our mask on two years ago. I think we'd have a very different outcome. That... Uh, Honestly, walking into stores, walking into banks, other places, that that thought is not lost on me. Like it's like I go up to the cash register to pay and it's like, wait a minute, I'm wearing a mask. Yeah. And I think it was, um, was it Randy? Yeah, Randy, who mentioned a minute ago, like watching the old Westerns where everyone has the their bandana pulled up over their face. Well, there's a it was really dusty. You did that so you weren't inhaling all the dust. And in reality, you know, wearing a mask isn't bad. Our pollen right now is horrible. So I wear a mask partially for protection from that. And I'm breathing a lot easier because I'm not walking outside all the time without a mask like I used to do. Yeah, and I love that you should read this comment here. This is so true. We're the same. We... We're wearing what are clearly not going to stop any virus, but they're wearing a mask of some sort. My favorite uh, that I've seen so far is I I saw someone have a mask on and they cut a hole where the mouth was. Yeah. 
There are but people who are checking, like uh, was said earlier, they're checking the box. So yes, I have it. It's on my chin. Yeah. So you won't get yelled at, but I clearly am saying I'm not smart enough to pull it up over my face. Well, my wife bought me one. It's clear. It's plastic that you yeah. put wear on your face. And I go, this, this is going to do nothing. This is going to do absolutely. Oh no, this is, this is cutting edge. I go cutting edge. What? It's like, it, that, this is not going to stop anything. Maybe someone's spitting on me. That's it. Well, it, it, prote it protects your eyes uh, better. No, 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 no that's not what, it, no, that's not what I'm car. talking. I'm going to wear it next time. It's, it's like, like this. It's, it's just oh. plastic. Just plastic like this. It looks yeah. like I'm in, in, in one of those movies. Yeah. Hannibal, part three. <laughs> well, and I agree with Steve. Um, I have trouble hearing and understanding people a little bit anyway i have mm -hmm. trouble hearing tones and that also means sometimes i don't enunciate my tones correctly unless i'm careful yes. and then when you muffle it under a mask yeah. like so many times i'm having to repeat myself and i feel bad because it's making communication more stressful which is also hurting our mental fitness yeah, Steve Jones has a, a good comment here too. But I am exactly in the same boat as you. I'm having problems even with my balance. I'm finding having that there restricts something about my eyesight. Oh. Wait till you're 58, you, you'll understand. But it, it does affect something with the breathing and the looking, he's just, he's just looking at me like, you're a little crazy, which is true which is true. But for me, having the mask on affects my balance in some way. It really so, does. Uh, an odd thought, and this is a, a guesstimate, is mm. some masks that are around your ears, if it's yeah. pulling too tight, yeah. could be putting pressure on your ears. And that's where our balance comes from. So your mask oh. may be too tight and it's throwing your ear and inner, inner ear balance off. I think you're right because since I've lost the weight, it's not as bad. When my head was look, looking like a large zit that was ready to pop and the strings were on so tight, it was probably also restricting my breathing because it was yes. pushing my large nose down. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. You're exaggerating about the head part, but the I, nose is correct. Uh, yes. Okay. Well, yes. I started with the over the ear loop yes. and around yeah. the neck. All the ones I wear now are sport bands, one up and one around my neck because yeah. the pressure on my ear was really bothering me. It was uncomfortable. So I've, I invested in, so I'll, I'll share this. Um, I have a very good respirator. It's by O2 Canada, completely mm -hmm. not endorsed. I found them on yeah. my own. It has replaceable filters that provide near N95 uh, protection. It has a silicone seal to give you a nice seal. The problem is it does look like you're wearing a jock strap or protective cup on your face. Yeah. Yes, I, I enjoyed that look. It was very good. Very sexy. So yeah. that well, is my... If like I'm a going seven be, on the sexy scale, for sure. Yeah. If I'm going to be in a doctor's office or somewhere confined, mm -hmm. that's what I wear. I did invite, I did uh, purchase a sport mask. It is a carbon filter mask that was designed for athletes, people biking in traffic to filter out a lot of the particulate matter you breathe. So it's a cloth mask with vents and a multi-layer carbon filter yeah. that provides actually really good protection it's light, it's flexible, it's comfortable. And probably 80% of the time, that's the mask I wear for the comfort and easy breathing, especially because mm -hmm. I can exhale and it doesn't go back through the filter. Okay, so let's just let's just take a pause for the cause here for one second. We're gonna address some of the things we talked about in the green room. Number one was, this probably won't go any farther than 30 minutes. And then we both said, no, we're talking. Uh, let's try to keep this where it's not crazy. We have, I think, talked about two of the things of the 10 that we wanted to talk about. So once again, I hope everybody's enjoying this. And what I'd like you to do, even the people that watch the replay, if you would like to see this discussion once a month, because it's ever unfolding, put a one. If you would rather never hear about COVID again, put a two. 
And number three, you just want to be invited and feel left out. But number three, okay. Yep. And so, good night, Colin. Sorry we missed you, but Colin, have a good night's sleep. You're the best, Colin. Yes. We've always thought so, with or without a mask. So we haven't really talked about um, the different variants. Yeah. So um, there are there are two variants that are spreading faster. Right now, it's not really clear if they are more deadly or you're getting sicker from them, but they do seem to be spreading faster. One of them is called the UK variant. That is mainly because of where it's most prevalent. It doesn't mean that's where it came from. I don't know if they've traced it. The other one is a, the most prevalent version in South Africa. And that one does seem to, people are getting more sick and uh, it does have a higher mortality rate. Overall, for COVID viruses compared to like the Ebola's of the world, the mortality rate is thankfully still pretty low, like below 2%. Mm -hmm. But compared to a flu, which was 0.02% or 0.2 in some areas, it's still higher than we, we would want. And with those variants, we do have some protection from the vaccine or if you've been sick, but it's going to be harder to recover from those. And that's also why it's they're spreading a little bit faster. Okay. All right. So um, I've heard, and I, I want to be delicate with this, but I've heard that certain places in the earth, uh, the strategy is no strategy. It's just going to let herd immunity do it. And I'm, I'm where I'm talking about is places like India, because there's like Canada. I don't know how many we've vaccinated. I think it's over a million. I, I believe oh, yeah. it's over, it's over a million, yeah. but we, but we have 30 million. I believe you did 30 million in the first month. I don't know what the rates were, but part of that is we had better access to the vaccines. Absolutely. Now that our demand is tapering off a little mm -hmm. bit because of people choosing and the number of people vaccinated, we will be able to ship a lot more vaccines to Canada. So I think you'll see the same uptake. And Canada's doing a little bit different, which actually a lot of medical professionals suggested to keep hospitals clear which is give everyone one vaccine, then go back within four months and give everyone your second. You sh the first, if you can just get one shot, I believe that it gives you about 60% protection. Okay, Meaning I want to unpack that because yep. th th this is where the discussion, I'm glad you went here. So I had a debate amongst some people who feel like they are experts and one said, the, the one shot is enough to keep you out of the hospital, yes. which means that you will not be backing up surgeries and where people really need to be life or death situations they can be catered to. Uh, the, the other, the other for person, the most part, yes. Yeah. They said he was saying 90%. If you did the first shot, you're not going to end up uh, on a ventilator. That is that is what the studies are showing that okay. very few people who have at least one shot will need to go into the hospital. And that also means they're very unlikely to die. It There still will be some, but by and, by and large, if you can get one shot, you may be sick, but you're not going to be hospitalized. And that's really, if, if we could just do that for everybody, that would be huge. Yes. Uh, yeah. And as uh, Randy points out, there is a difference between the efficacy rates of the vaccines and how well they're responding to the variants. So they're collecting data every day. Um, when I got my first vaccine, the CDC has a voluntary tracking program. Yeah. So every day I was answering questions about symptoms, side effects, and mm -hmm. now it's once a week. So they're tracking as much as they can to try and see what those larger numbers, larger studies will be. And yeah. 
how effective it will be. Also, the companies are already working on booster shots and developing ones specifically targeting some of the new strains. Wow. We, we ran out of vaccines. That's what they're saying here. Ooh, that's sad. I, yeah. But do you know why it is? Because we're not manufacturing them here. And we are, yes. we are only getting what people are willing to give us. Right. Which is sad. Where the yep. states, you guys are manufacturing and still having problems, but doing yep. far better than us. I love, I love this next one. And this is why these conversations are never within 40 minutes. Did you know it's 40 minutes right now? <laughs> and I feel like we just started, sir. Okay, so here we go. Let's let's dig into this. What are your thoughts on passports and COVID stamps? This is real. I, I, I'm deep in this. I got my toe in this pond, brother. And how many people are going to have to take a vaccine to be able to work again? <laughs> that That is a big can of worms. Um, and it is being hotly debated. Yes. So I think I am all about voluntary. If I could personally select an official passport ID check program, I, I pay for TSA pre and I, I do. I, I, it's been so long since I've been to Canada. The, um, the, the quick way in and out of Canada. Um, what's the fly? Oh, the Superfly program. Anyway, I've already forgotten the name of it. I've always um, thought you were Superfly, brother. Yes, I wish. Superfly. Uh, okay. So I would, I would gladly have something like that, yeah. to, so that I could take a cruise, so I could have an easier time at the airport, so I can go into government buildings, whatever it happens mm. to be. Do we require it for everybody? Uh, I don't think something like that will be passed or there will be much compliance in the US. I think it might be problematic, but I am all in favor of a voluntary way to to verify that I've been vaccinated so that I can resume uh resume life. Okay, Disney Fast Pass. So yes, our, Disney Fast Pass. <laughs> yes, I agree. So I I think what's happening and it's just around the corner and I'm talking when I say around the corner in the next 10 years when I'm a very old man, um, we'll have chips in our hands. And yep. we will and it'll basically just say what we've done and not done. And I'm hoping there won't be people uh, hacking your hand, trying to get your chip. <laughs> yep. And thanks to, to Amy, it is Nexus. I was like, it starts with an N. I've been so far away from traveling. I forgot the Nexus yes. program. And, and Donald's right. You know, when I traveled to India, I had to go to a travel clinic. Yeah. I got a bunch of meds and a bunch of vaccines and I carried my vaccinate proof of vaccination to get into mm -hmm. the country and to get into the campus where I was working at the time. That was my, you know, to travel there. That's what it took. You have to have a passport to go into another country, having a vaccine passport or similar verification Honestly, I don't have an issue with it, and if but I I find it fine if people want to stay at home on their couch and not go anywhere, then fine. That's that's your choice too. Okay, we really haven't talked at all about the the title. Yes, when are we when, when are we turning? We to just randomly one make one's up, you know, <laughs> and then we'll just go. What sounds good? When yes. are we returning? Now, if we're going to discuss it, it's a 50-50 proposition. This has happened before where I've actually looked at the title of the show and went, did we even address that? <laughs> so are are we going to be anywhere near, in, like I'm talking in the next year? Let's do 12 months first. What, what normalcies that I can vaguely remember will we get back? I think we will see dining, most travel, um, by late fall or at least winter, I think we'll see cru limited cruising returned. We're already seeing an uptake of air travel. So I think f when we talk about what we'll be able to do, I think by summer and fall in a lot of areas, it will look pretty normal. Okay. What we'll see is there may be reduced capacity. 
Mm -hmm. There may be still plexiglass boundaries up between tables, um, between you and the cashier. Yes. Uh, it may still be a little hard to find affordable toilet paper. I do, hopefully not, but you never know. It's but I think getting better here on that. Good. Yeah, and hand sanitizers. There, there's a billion of them now. Like there's a surplus of them. Right. So, yeah. I think, but some things aren't going to go back to the way they are, and I actually think it's very good. Companies have now found out that we can be as productive or more productive working remote, as Randy brought up. So companies are going to be less geographically confined, mm -hmm. and I think they're going to attract a whole new type of worker to their area. And I actually think the reduction in traffic, commute time, the stress, I've, I'm finally happy to see so many governments and companies realize I don't have to sit in a two by two cube to yeah. get my job done. And I okay. love that. I want to unpack something. I've been saying that nonstop because this is what people are asking. So here's the thing. Companies that used to rent these buildings that were $2 million a year, and now they're realizing they don't need to have all their employees in the same building as you're just saying here. But what has changed now, and we haven't discussed this, is because there is flexibility of you being home. If you have skill sets like you have, you now have worldwide appeal. As long as you have good internet connection, yep. you can now work for several employees freelancing if you wanted. And you could be making, let, let's say you had, I don't know, let, let's say you had five employers that paid you for your specialty and they paid you 25,000 each. And you had to work a certain amount of hours and you allocated those hours. And then what you could do is, because you don't have to live in the city, you could then get them to bid on you. Once you decided you liked the top four, and I have a friend who does code, and that's exactly what he did. Yep. And he's not traveling. And he works for one place out of Minnesota, and another place out of China, and another place, out. it's crazy. Our friend AJ just opened up and decided this was the perfect time to start his consulting business. Yeah. And he's a great guy. He's brilliant. He's fun to work with. And it's going really well for him. Um, so, yeah, I think it's companies are going, it's going to open up freelance opportunities. It's going to open flexible opportunities, um, distributed workforce, all of that. We're going to see huge benefits. Do you agree with some of what I'm saying there? Like Absolutely. Gonna, yeah. Short and, term, I think it's office buildings and people who own yeah. those buildings. Short term, it's going to be tough. But it's just like when you upgrade your internet. We fill up every available space. So more companies will who could get an office may yeah. now have conference rooms and a part of a floor or part of a building. There may be more temporary locations like the hoteling where small yeah. companies and contractors can go and have all of the resources of a large company and there's a hundred different companies on the floor so uh, we will end up filling that space back up before too long it's as awesome as aj is i want everyone to realize how awesome hans is so you know <laughs> there is there is different levels of awesomeness but uh one of the comments here is disturbing me a little bit. And of, okay. course, and of course it is from Randy. Business, it may never be the same. Yeah. What, what does that mean, Randy, to you? Like, are, are we never going back? Are we never, are we going back twice a week? Are we, are we going to be sharing offices with different companies because yep. the companies don't need as many spots? Like, how's this going to work? And that's what prompted what I was saying is the companies that force everyone to go back to the mm -hmm. office are going to lose their best people. Mm -hmm. They're going to go to companies that allow one day, two days in the office, or go in when you need to yes. and have remote productivity. And I think I've prior to this, I was working for remote 100% remote for four years. Mm -hmm. So this was already my life. And if anything, it's, taught me that I I don't want to. Like I'm willing to to sacrifice in other areas yes. so that I don't go back in 
and, and Atlanta, I've had jobs where I was commuting an hour and a half each way every day in heavy yes. traffic. Yes. I can't take that stress anymore. I'm, no. Uh, in Danny Glover's words in Lethal Weapon, I'm just too old for this. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. We added it on there. But the uh, here, here, it, here is the thing. There has been some forms of richness with this experience. Okay. I have developed relationships with people that I would have never developed. Yes. I am now doing a crazy morning show in the morning. That would have never happened. So if you're flexible and resilient and you have a little hmm, grit, we'll call it grit. If you have some grit, you can flourish. You can thrive in this environment. But if you're rigid to what was instead of what could be, you might be in a really bad place. So, and I've noticed with you, look at you were a person I had to hound for three months. I said to you, please come on air. You've got special gifts. People need to get to know you. You have been absolutely embraced and loved on HAPS. I don't know about the other formats, but on here, you're a big head. Three to four people love me on the other platforms too. Yeah. Well, that's good. You know, we three or four is good. It's better than none. Yeah. But uh, we um, we've learned a lot uh, about ourselves, you and I, I think, and our abilities. And yep. the uh, the other thing I've realized too is we have no sense of time when we're together, and uh, we are now at fifty one minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've been watching the time, but we were rolling, and I was looking for. Well, it's but it just gets sweet around 40. Yes. It, I don't know what it is. You get in a sweet spot. These things, the, the crowd seems to get involved. Look, look at the comments. Yep. Rolling through. Yeah. There's so one of, um, one of my favorite books, variable star by spider Robinson and uh, Robert a Heinlein mm -hmm. has a passage in it that I'll paraphrase. And it okay. said, society has always been driven by two types of people those who fear the future and fight to avoid it and those who love change and can't wait to see what it brings and more disagreements and conflicts and wars have been started between those two groups than anyone else. And I see that every day, the world is always changing and evolving. And if we embrace it or at least accept it, and stop trying to stop it from moving forward. I believe a lot of people uh, people would be a, a much happier. That doesn't mean the change is always good. Sometimes it's horrible, mm -hmm. but we can't stop change from happening. It's inevitable. So let's let's roll with the waves a little bit, just like the yes. ducks and the seagulls do. Yeah. Let's enjoy it and make the most out of it because it's happening whether we want it to or not. Okay, you know what you just said there though is very Buddhist. You're basically yes. just you're you're basically saying go with the flow, embrace change, and know that you are being directed. Love some of the teachings in Buddhism and Taoism as well as other religions. There's so many places we can find pieces of the truth and find a great, you know, compass to keep us pointed north. Mm-hmm. Hello to Brother John. Right, uh, glad is, to see you. Hello is everybody around. enjoying the broadcast today? Because uh, we're having a blast. We knew we'd have fun chewing on this. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, a lot of times when Hans and I get together, there's uh, different types of energies that go on, and I think people feel it. There is a, a little bit of friction between him and I because we have very different beliefs, but we also have great respect for each other. So I think you feel that as well. Yes. And, and my life is better knowing you. And, and I think from our first conversation, when we bumped into each other, you know, it was like meeting a, a long lost friend. So I've, I've appreciated that, you know, through all of this, we've been able to continue to talk and grow. We found forums like this to be able to share some of this and hope that other people have, you know, at least enjoyed the time they're spending. Yeah. If not, you know, I focus on edutainment. I want you to have fun. I want you to enjoy it. 
but I want you to take away something that'll make your life a little bit better so that this time was worth the hour you spent versus mm -hmm. doing something else. Yeah, and, and I think too, with what you, a lot of the stuff that you talk about, it makes you think like, I'm thinking as we're, we're, you know, we're stretching and growing like every day during this, I've made a new distinction about the world and myself every day. And sometimes they're very painful. So we haven't addressed this and we have, maybe I can talk into going maybe another 10, but we haven't talked about the impact of mental health right? and, and how certain people are thriving in this. I think you and I are doing okay. We yep. have other days we're not doing so well. And I think that's the days we, we connect with each other and talk, but there's different frustrations now and fatigues. And if we could kind of break them down a little bit, that would be great. Absolutely. And I'd, I'd say first and foremost, you've got, everyone has a tremendous network, even if you don't realize it or necessarily appreciate it and reach out to that network, spend time, ask for help. There's nothing wrong with it. And if you're not comfortable doing that, you know, look for an outsider, look for a hotline, someone you can talk to because there are way too many people who are struggling. And the same way that we need to reach out, others like myself, I need to recharge by disconnecting. And so I've tried to, when I've, during times of stress, disconnect, put my phone on the charger, yeah. sit outside, sit on the deck, maybe go fishing, do something where I can't hear another voice. I can't right. hear, maybe I don't even play music, but just disconnect so that there's nobody is asking me for anything for that period of time and I can just recharge. Yeah, you're grounding yourself in nature. That's what you're doing. But here's what's happened for me today. Like I was kind of um, not in a funk, but almost in, in a state of um, hibernation today, my energy level. I had to fight to, to get myself to do anything today, to be yep. motivated. And then as soon as you talked about doing this, I was just like, no, let's do this because this will <laughs> energize me. Because I knew it would be fun. I didn't know what direction it would go in. And because I do shows every day, I've learned with HAPS that all the pieces for some reason will come together. And out of it usually comes a really beautiful exchange of energy. And in it is this heightening of energy. So if you can go in these types of chats where they heighten your vibration, great. But there I've been in other ones where, oh, Lord, you feel like emotional vampires have drained you dry. Do you want yeah. to address that a little bit of being aware of maybe the, the people in your life and the people that uplift you and maybe the ones that uh, the naysayers? Yeah. And, and even for me, it's it's even more people in the middle. They aren't necessarily a bad influence or or drawing from me. But I know what my time and interaction with them is going to be. Mm -hmm. And I have to decide, is that good for me right now? And so I have some people who are a little more, we'll say, forceful with their opinions. Mm -hmm. They're a little more likely to complain about things. And if I want to go and listen to them talk, I'll do it. If I want to have a conversation... I'll cut that person out for a little bit of time and I'll do something else instead. So yes. trying to better match the experience with what I'm trying to get out of it. Like today I was going to go on live either way because I just, I wanted to, there were some things I just wanted to talk about because the news was kind of piling up and I was starting to get a lot of the same questions, but I was like, you know what, if Michael's available this will be a better show. I'll feel better. You know, that same positive energy because we have that great rapport and we look at the world very differently, but with the same goals, very similar values. I knew it would be a better experience if we got to do this together. And, you know, it's been my fault, but I've missed doing a show with you for a while. Well, you've also been juggling a lot of things. Yes. 
So, yeah. And you have to realize that too, is that sometimes people can't connect with you because their plate is full. Yes. And it's not because they're avoiding you. It's because life now is crazy for many people. The expectations are through the roof. So yes. I, I find the average person now is working countless hours. I'm doing better. Um, the, this year, uh, our workload or, and my workload picked up far more than it we I was expecting, but it was getting better. Today, not as much. You know, I, like I was up at five to prep to deliver a workshop at seven yes. because they were in Saudi Arabia, which was wonderful. I met some amazing people this morning. And the rest of the day, I've been kind of just get over the next meeting, get over the next call, mm -hmm. get over the next hump. And that's why I was like, you know, this evening I'm going to relax. I'm going to watch a recorded college football game where yeah. I already know who won. And I wanted to do this because part of me, I knew I would feel better if there was something that I gave back and maybe helped someone else out. And that's really, you know, that's why you got me to do the channel. This was another way to, give back and try and make the world a little bit better place for us. Just one tiny little piece at the, yeah. at a time. Simple acts of kindness. Yeah. But the, the thing with you that I think you undervalue within yourself is that you have a very unique energy signature that people resonate with. And when you say things, which would probably make you also a great politician, you are believable. You are very you. believable and there is, I think, a foundation within you that's very strong. You know who you are and you're not up here trying to be somebody else. So there's a level of, um, I'm going to call it sweetness. It's almost like a boy, boy like charm at, at times that you have. And we live in a world right now where so many people are very bitter and angry and they have uh, what I call luggage that they carry everywhere with them and haven't dealt with. And the pandemic has forced those people to really lighten the load and look inward. Because before the pace was, you know, let's go to work, let's do our hour and a half commute, let's, let's go do our job and then come back. And now relationships have been tested, especially, you know, marriages, a lot of marriages have dissolved because of the pandemic. Uh, it, I really, I, I do really feel bad for those people. Um, it, I, I, it's like money may not make people happy, but money stress can aggravate almost any problem. Um, and I know that I've really, I've struggled over the last year and had to make adjustments like everyone else. And luckily, you know, we built our foundation and our marriage a while ago on always sincerely trying to listen to the person and make adjustments. Yes. And as long as that's happened, we've done well. In periods where one person thought the other wasn't listening or changing well enough, mm -hmm. it got a little bit tougher. And so definitely there have been stressors this past year, but if I was really honest with myself, it would have happened regardless. Like there wasn't like it's certainly COVID and all the other stress didn't help, but I don't honestly think that we wouldn't have had to work through some issues anyway. We just hit that point where it's like, okay, it's time to take a little bit harder of a turn, change and do things a little differently because we've hit that next stage in life and some of the things that were working before don't and we need to change and fix them. And I think we keep coming out of that stronger. Um, usually, there's a few things where I'm kind of still angry or growly about, but they'll go away quick. They go away quickly. You've been blessed in one way, though we haven't really addressed is that there's a lot of households that have not had any form of income for over a year. That is 
and so for a lot of people what they do for a living is what they base their self-worth of so their ego has been shattered and if you want to do spiritual work grind yourself down to nothing well take someone's livelihood away from them that's been working say for 30 years doing something they now are i have friends that are saying um, I may have to go hit the books again and figure out a different way to make a living because I don't know if I'm ever going to be back doing what I did. It's the world is so changed. And he was uh, what I would call a rigger. Do you know what a rigger is for uh, concerts? The guys that do the rigging. Like if you go oh, see ZZ right. Top and they've got all the, the metal structures up, they get paid in- incredibly well. They're insured. They got to yep. make sure that things don't fall down if it gets windy. Uh, he's not working and he has not worked for a very long time. We have a lot of musicians that aren't making money anymore. So yep. do you need to go? Cause if you need to go, we can just wrap this up. Uh, I'm okay. Uh, I, I already missed, uh, I already missed my window for what was going to be my cutoff. So my time constraint is gone. I do want to acknowledge something that both brother John and, and Steve Jones said yes. in the comments, which was, for a lot of couples and a lot of relationships, even with employers, um, we had it forced us to pull down our face masks and revealed more of who we were. And in, for some people, hopefully that was great. For a lot of people, that was more than they could mm. survive short term. But if you look back at this, when we had the big housing crisis and the world economic crisis, couples went through almost the same thing. Right. And there were a lot of stresses. There were losses of jobs and income. And as soon as it was financially viable, a lot of families had to split up. And it's horrible. Yeah. I think it's the, that economic pressure. Yeah. Uncertainty. Wish, yeah. Uncertainty, uncertainty. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the one word. Yeah. When you live in uncertain times, people sometimes act erratic and selfishly. Yeah. Well, so. And oddly enough, that concept is what got me into short term, not crazy prepping. Yes. Is if I can, if there's only one job I can do and that job goes away, mm-hmm. what do I fall back on? Right. So in my life with things that are important to me, things that mm-hmm. matter, things that I worry about, I've tried to establish some level of redundancy. One is none two is one, three is a good start. So career wise, I have probably a dozen different jobs I could easily jump into because I've tried to stay diversified instead Mm -hmm. of specializing. It hurts me short term because I can't get some of the dream jobs that are pay really well, Right, but it gives me a lot of other opportunities. Makes you more employable. Exactly. And I think more people hopefully will take a similar approach. Yes. Take their skills, take their passions and find other places they can do it and become more marketable. Yeah. And everybody has unique skill sets. And yes. just figure out what you're passionate about. I, I just want to take a moment and thank everyone for the very intelligent, some of them fun, funny comments. It's made the show really pleasurable tonight and uh i've really had a great time thank you so much i I Uh, agree 100 percent, and i apologize for the nose itches and sniffles i was outside earlier without my mask and our pollen is at the red level in georgia where for anyone who hasn't seen the southeast united states during pine pollen season imagine everything you love lightly spray painted in yellow Mm -hmm. that's how thick the pine pollen is. So um, I'm a little congested and sniffly from that because I forgot, I didn't think I was going to be outside long and I didn't put my mask on to filter out the pollen. Is, is there anyone that wants to ask Hans a a question before we beam down and we will, we'll discuss this again, but we're at, we're at that constraint of time where we'd like to end it. So if if you have something that you would in, would like to uh, be addressed by Hans or myself, we will do that. And feel free, as always, you can always reach out to me on the side, especially if there's something you wanted to ask about or talk about, or even a story you wanted to share. Feel free to reach out to me on the side. 
Um, yes. You can also, uh, everything that I do, and I'll get all of these videos published too, um, all the videos are on YouTube. And if you go to ekmanguides.com, all of the articles I've published, the guides, the conference presentation. So thanks to Amy who runs fabulous events and I can't wait to do her events this fall. Uh, we're working on some exciting topics. So if we can help, I try and publish what I can so you can grab it. But if there's something else I can help with, reach out at any time. Oh, look at that. You're just starting to break up. I think that that's a sign. <laughs> that's the first time tonight. Um, is there one pearl of wisdom you want to leave us with before we go? Or you just want to run after your wife and... Um, I, I would say, um, yes, absolutely there is. And I can't believe I thought of this because I shared this with somebody about an hour and a half ago. Okay. Oddly enough, it's the never ending story. So kind of a fun children's movie. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it was also a book, but I, I can't confirm that, but I thought it was based on a book as well. It is where the idea is one kid is reading a book. And he's following someone else's story, but mm -hmm. we're following his story. And when things are stressful like this, it, it made me think this week, no matter how depressed, no matter how unsatisfied I think I am with the way my life is, mm -hmm. I have to realize how many people are dreaming, having that never ending story moment that they might achieve my life. Absolutely. They might have a home, a job they love. They might be married with awesome dogs. Like, and for me, that keeps me better grounded that, yes, some things aren't working well now. But I live, I'm very appreciative and very thankful for the life we've built. And I'm going to do everything I can to maintain it and continue yeah. to improve it. But I can't lose sight of that just because, wow, I broke something again today or something else isn't working or I didn't get enough sleep. Those are so small in the long run that yes. I, I want to make sure don't lose perspective that of, of and appreciate the good things in life. Yeah. And just know that simple acts of kindness really do send a ripple into the universe. And what we did tonight energetically, I think, helped heal the collective of this room. So thank you. That was a little more mustard than you wanted on the hot dog. But nope. there you love go. it. And I, I really appreciate the comments in the in the interactions and to see some old friends pop up in the chat that it, it's just great. So that has warmed my evening. I'm in a fabulous mood, which is great. Even after a hard day, I appreciate, you know, your time, Michael, and giving up very dog. to do this and everyone else's. I hear wagging tails. Did you hear that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's getting off. Thank God. <laughs> the pups are in the background. They're like, hey, you Yay. can reach the treat jar for us. We can't get it unlocked. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. All right. Everyone stay safe, stay healthy, and thanks. Thanks, Michael.